With the addition of Lao Che and Gorgo into Rise of Kingdoms, the infantry meta has forever changed, and for the first time in forever, you can say that being an infantry main is viable once again. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about should you still become an infantry main? Is it a good idea for your account? Or are archers and cavs going to be better? So, if you want to know the potential of infantry in this current meta and where I believe they will go in the future, and if you want to know if you should become an infantry main, because there are some players who will really enjoy it and some players who won't, you want to stick around till the end of the video. Now, just as I did with my archer video, let me quickly remind everyone what I think it means to main a troop type. And really, really quickly and really simply, what I count as maining a troop type is they're your main focus. Whenever you're going for that troop type, everything is based around them. In the early game, your technology is all based around that troop type. So infantry, you charge in infantry technology. Your city skin is set to that troop type. You look for the best civilization for that troop type. Your commander priorities will pretty much be that troop type. So whenever there's a new commander for that troop, you're going to go for them as fast as possible. And if you run around three marches in a five march murder ball of that one troop type, you're probably going to be considered a main for that troop. So that's what I count as maining a troop. So now that we know what it means to main a troop type, what do I think about becoming infantry main in the current meta? And I'll start off with the advantages of it. And the first one is a little bit more early game oriented, and that is infantry are probably the best troops and commanders in the early game because they are a very cheap to heal obviously they only use food and wood which is the easier resource to acquire b their gold keys hold probably the two strongest gold key commanders as a matter of fact i would say that charles martel and pyrus are probably the two strongest gold key commanders charles martel being a og very very formidable commander and the other thing is that infantry in the early game also have the ability to use Sun Tzu. So in the early game with infantry, you're pretty much set. You can either go and get an Alex, you can use a Martel, you can use a Pyrus, you can be a Whale or a Free-to-Play. And infantry are still going to be the best choice in the early game because they are literally just that powerful in the early game. Which does allow a lot of players to transfer from early game into late game while using infantry. So that's certainly one advantage of being an infantry main. You basically get to prepare to be one in the early game without many issues because personally as an archer main when I was in the early game it was an absolute hellhole but once I reached the end game it's alright. With infantry you've got a very very steady transition and that's certainly a major advantage. Now onto end game benefits for infantry let's just start off by discussing the best three marches you would really really use and in my personal opinion the current best three marches are a Guan with a CPO because that's a really really solid march we know it's still pretty good we got a Lao Che with a Gorgo. They synergize extremely well. I don't want to split them because Gorgo needs to really only be with Lao Che and Lao Che with Gorgo is just crazy OP. And then you're going to go like a Tarek with a Sargon or an Alex with a Sargon. Really, any of those two commanders with Sargon is also going to be good. And that's a very, very solid murder ball. And the best thing about this infantry murder ball, there's a very good amount of AoE in it. You've got Lao Che with a five target AoE. You've got Guan with, I think it's a three target AoE. Sepio with a three target AoE. And then you've got some decent single target damage between Gorgo, Tarek, and Sargon. So the infantry murder ball is all around currently very, very balanced. And it's got adequate debuffs as well. Sepio has got one of the best debuffs in the game. Sargon brings some of the most powerful debuffs in the game. Obviously, it is a little bit more confusing now with the current meta as to where his ore debuff is going to go, but for now, it is still a powerful debuff. And then also, Gorgo brings some unique debuffs in her kit as well. And then finally, Guan is giving probably the best debuff in the game with that silence effect. So when we look at this infantry murder ball, it's really, really well-rounded. It's got good AoE, it's got really good debuffs, and the commanders are also just very strong. When you look at them, Lao Che is the current meta. CPO is one of the strongest commanders in the game. Guan Yu has one of the best debuffs in the game. Gorgo is very, very powerful with Lao Che and also holds a ton of value herself. And then Tarek is obviously fairly decent and Sargon holds an amazing debuff on his own as well. So we look at this infantry murder ball and we're in a really, really good position if you want a two main infantry because they are very well balanced. Now, not only are the infantry murder balls very well balanced, if you're an infantry main, you also have another advantage, especially in the current meta, because currently running cav marches is the big thing. A lot of players are running like two to three cav marches, and what do infantry counter? Well, they counter cavs, and cavs are probably the most common thing I'm seeing on the open field, and if you're a decently powerful infantry main, you're going to be getting extremely good trades against just about anyone that is running cavalry units 
So anyone that's an infantry main who's up against cavs is in an extremely good position. Because if you're going up against the current cav meta with that 3 march infantry murder ball, it's going to be really, really difficult to take you out. And especially since I don't see many players run a 2 march archer murder ball because it's a bit weird to run a Henry's you're laying in a Boudicca Artemisia nowadays. Most players aren't even running more than one archer march. Usually you'll see like a Boudicca's you're laying. Maybe someone will have a Nebu YSG every now and again. I rarely see real archer mains on the open field, like in a big open field brawl. There'll be marches every now and again, but they're not the majority. So infantry, not only are they countering the current meta really well because we know Lauche is definitely beating those Nevskis. He's destroying Jones. He's destroying Hauche Bings. Pretty much, he's just one of the most powerful commanders in the game. Infantry are pretty much able to counter every other cav march as well. Even a Guan Scipio has got a good chance of countering that Nevsky Joan. Sometimes it does lose, but with the rest of the support of a murder ball, you're going to always beat a cav murder ball if you've got a strong infantry murder ball, which is something that's really, really good. And your counter archers, they just don't really exist. So in the current meta right now, Infantry are in a perfect position. We've got a really, really powerful commander that's able to counter the current meta. And then we've just got all round other powerful commanders who can hold their own, if not do better than holding their own. So against Cavs and against Archers, Infantry are in a really, really good middle ground where they can beat the meta and they're not really contested by the other troop types since it's not there. Some other small advantages to manning infantry that some other troops don't benefit from. The first thing is that one of the infantry civilizations, France, actually does give you 20% hospital healing speed and is actually a fairly decent infantry civilization. So getting that hospital healing speed while also getting a special unit is certainly a bonus and I thought I'd mention that. When you look at troop types, any stat really does help and even something as small as this is extremely good. So manning infantry with these extra stats is something that is going to help you because healing speed is amazing. And especially for low spenders and free to players who don't get as many speed ups as a whale player, Hospital healing speed ups are probably what you need the most. Most players run out of speed ups in a KVK more than they do run out of resources because a big kingdom is going to support you with resources. They can't support you with speed ups though. So if you're a free to play low spender, infantry are really good for the regard that when we look at their hospital healing speed, they have a really big advantage over other troops. The next advantage for infantry is that when we look at these infantry commanders, they often do seem to be a little bit more tanky. When we look at their stats, they've got shielding effects, which no other troops have to my knowledge. There's no cav shielding, there's no archer shielding. You've got some leadership shielding, but that doesn't count. So infantry have these more tanky skills that allow them to have more sustain on the open field. And as a lower spender and a free to play player, that's what you need to get good large trades. Because if you're running archers like myself, unless you've got mega buffed murder balls like I do, if you get hit, you're pretty much sent back to your city. Even when I get hit as an archer player, I'm usually sent back to my city. So I'm always on edge. When I get hit, it's like, okay, I've got to instantly move back. I can't hang around at all. If I hit someone for too long, I'm going to take too many saves. All this stuff is constantly going on. But with infantry, they're way more tanky. You can afford to make these mistakes with them almost because they can escape these situations much, much easier. And oddly enough, infantry troops can become some of the fastest troops in the game as well. So certainly infantry do have that advantage as being able to pretty much just take a hit to the face and still survive, or even just take a hit and keep hitting someone else. Because even if a CPO is getting attacked by something and the rest of your murder ball is hitting something else, you're perfectly fine to almost sacrifice that CPO because it's still going to get a decent trade between all of its shielding effects and all of its damage reductions. It is probably one of the most tanky commanders in the game, and because of that, all of these infantry commanders, besides some of the more glass cannon ones, can actually afford to take these hits and take this damage which other commanders in some ways just can't afford to take. Like, you wouldn't want to take your Nevsky fully down to zero, but a CBO probably wouldn't even go down to zero in double the time it would take a Nevsky. So, when we look at infantry, they're much more tanky. They got that sustain on the open field, and for low spender free to plays, it's usually what draws you towards them because you are able to make those mistakes, and it's not going to be as expensive. Like, if you accidentally let an infantry murder ball into the enemy murder ball, you have a fairly good chance of getting away. I often see infantry that walk into a murder ball just get away. Yes, they take some saves. Yes, they're going to get a bad trade. But they get away without a horrible trade. But when I see a cav march or an archer march enter an enemy murder ball, they're done for. Especially archer marchers, they get demolished. Infantry, though, they have a very good chance of getting out of there if you are able to make the right decisions in a quick enough time frame. So that is certainly one good benefit about being an infantry main. They have a good middle ground between that damage and then also between that tankiness. One final advantage of being an infantry main right now is that Guan Yu is available in the daily special offer. This is certainly an advantage to mid-spenders who want to actually just purchase him 
because at the moment he's not the best investment for gold heads. But from the daily special offer, he's one of, if not the best commanders available here, especially if you're looking to be an infantry main. So this is a small thing, but it is a pretty big thing. And he's available in the daily special offer, but also is available in the legendary tavern. So if you're looking to be an infantry main, being able to get these free sculptures is certainly a great thing because some troops, like for example, archers, where a lot of the commanders are very end game, you don't really get that option. But with infantry, you do get the option to get Guan Yu from both the legendary tavern and also the daily special offer which is really, really good. So that is one advantage I also thought I would mention. So now that we've discussed the advantages of being an infantry main, what disadvantages are there? Because yes, there are a ton of advantages of maining infantry right now, but there are also quite a few disadvantages. And the first one is, we currently don't know the future for infantry too well. Usually with some troop types, you can guess what's going to happen next. Like with archers, I can probably guess the next commanders are going to be a single target commander with fairly decent damage, with good stats, and they're probably not going to have smite damage. But with infantry right now, I don't know if they're going to release more smite damage commanders. I don't know if they're going to release more AoE. I have no clue what they're doing with infantry because at the moment they've done a lot of weird things with the whole smite damage, giving extra normal attacks. All of this is completely new. So it's kind of thrown off balance what we think could happen for the future because if they keep adding smite commanders, commanders like Sargon and even commanders like Scipio could start to lose value as that smite meta takes over and things such as skill damage increases if they are in those commander kits or inside of their trees could make them less valuable because CPO benefits from skill damage, Lao Che benefits more from normal attack. So even though they currently work right now, the murder ball may become slightly less effective maybe a year or two years from now. And if you're going full in on an infantry murder ball, that is definitely bad news. So the current future for infantry is slightly uncertain and that is definitely something that you would want to take into account if you want to be an infantry main. The other thing with infantry is that two of the commanders which I recommended and that are almost essential to a 3 march infantry murderable are Mightiest Governor. And Tarek especially is not the best investment to be honest. He's a good commander, he's probably needed within a 3 march murderable. And if you don't have an Alexander the Great, he's going to be a better choice. But he is Mightiest Governor only. That's the only way to really get him. I mean, you can get him from, I think it's like Oratark Tavern, but that's not very worth it in terms of your gems. And Gorgo is the newest infantry commander in the game. So obviously she is Mightiest Governor only. Though the good thing is since she came out very recently, she'll be in the next two Mightiest Governors from now. So if you want to get Gorgo, now is probably your best chance to try and apply for it through your kingdom. And if you get her, you're in a good position. So really, you're in a bad position if you don't get both of these commanders because they are almost essential. You can't really substitute them. You can definitely substitute the Tarek, but Gorgo is a must-have for a 3 March infantry murderable to put with that Lao Che. So that is definitely one disadvantage to wanting to run those infantry commanders because looking at them, they are certainly very, very mightiest governor based. The next disadvantage to becoming an infantry main is that infantry equipment absolutely sucks. There's really nothing in infantry equipment that is a standout piece because all infantry equipment, to my knowledge, only gives defense and attack. And for that reason, they are at a huge disadvantage on equipment because cavalry equipment, for example, I think gives something like 20% health. Archer equipment gives like 15, 16% health. Infantry equipment, literally 0%. I don't even think any of these substitute pieces give infantry health at all. And for that reason, infantry have got probably literally, like quite literally, the largest disadvantage compared to any other troop type based on equipment. Because even though some of these blueprints which you would consider using are easy to acquire, whether it be through Lost Canyon or literally just through the Crystal Chest, they aren't giving the stats that you would really, really want on an infantry account. Because yes, infantry do get usually a fair amount of health, but when they don't, and even when they don't have as much health because they are lacking on equipment, it is a disadvantage. So infantry equipment not having health is certainly a major thing you want to consider because when we look at all commanders, health is one of the best generic stats you can access and equipment with health is almost the most valuable thing they can get. So infantry are going to struggle in that regard because when we look at them, they don't have any health on their equipment. And that's something that is probably not going to change in the future, even with the new equipment update. I'm pretty sure they're just going to amplify the stats on HPs. I don't think they'd add more stats. So it is very difficult to be an infantry main and go for legendary equipment because you're getting fairly poor stats on it, which is definitely an unfortunate part of being an infantry main. So now that we know what the advantages and disadvantages are of using infantry, who do I think is going to benefit the most from becoming an infantry main? And really simply put, 
Being an infantryman is certainly a viable decision. I don't think it's even in any way unviable. If you're a whale to a free-to-play, it's definitely a great choice. But who do I think would benefit the most as an infantryman? Well, I reckon it's going to be the free-to-play to, to low-spender player base because infantry have tankiness. They've got the ability to have less risk, but they also, in some situations, give less reward. So, for example, a really, really strong Nevsky is going to get way more kills in a shorter period of time with less total saves if you use it right. But if you mess up with a Nevsky drone, you're going to take a fairly big hospital bill. But with CP on a Guan Yu, yes, it's going to be a slower grind. You're going to get less kills as quickly, but you've got way more safety in that march. And it's certainly more beneficial for a free-to-play low spender who probably has a little bit more time on their hands and plays the game a little bit more actively and is willing to be more patient on the open field. So, so if you're playing as infantry, you're going to be a little bit more patient on the open field but in that way, you're also going to be getting steady kill gain. You're never really going to get a negative trade if you use infantry right. But whereas if you use calves or archers, you've got a really severe risk of taking a negative trade. Like if I mess up with Boudicca, that's like a 100,000 to 300,000. And my trade is just horrible. And if you mess up with calves, it's a very similar story. But with infantry, it might be 150,000 to 250,000 or 150,000 to even 200,000. And that's perfectly fine in a, sev in a kill point ratio because... That is a viable way for free to play players to play because you're going to mess up eventually, you're going to take the sevs eventually, and infantry do give that safety net that you need. And the other thing infantry have right now is that ability to transfer really easy from the early game to the late game. Martel is a good secondary to CPO as you work on other marches. Alexander the Great is a great, uh, pun intended, secondary with Sargon the Great, another pun. So when we look at these commanders, they have ability to transition from the early game into the end game very effectively. They've got really early game commanders and they've got the ability to have more tankiness and more sustain on the open field, which allows a low risk but lower reward situation. So if you're willing to be a little bit more patient in terms of how quickly you get kills, infantry can be a really, really good situation. And I'm not saying in any way they can't get a really, really good report, like a million kill points to 100,000. But that's going to take more time, it's going to take more effort, and you won't get as many of those reports as if you were an archer or cav main, but you won't be taking as many serves. That's the real trade-off right there. It's a slow and steady grind with infantry, whereas with archers and cavs, it's a sporadical grind. Sometimes you're on the high, and the next second, you've got a full hospital. So with infantry, I highly recommend them for free-to-play low spenders, because they are a slow grind, slow reward. And when we look at the civilizations for infantry, France is just extremely good for free-to-play low spenders, because healing speed is an amazing thing to have as a free-to-play low spender because you won't be rolling in speed up. So as an infantry player, you're probably going to be free to play low spender, but even a whale can benefit from being an infantry main, though I think the best audience for you is basically free to play low spender, or someone who doesn't have as many resources or as many speed ups as they would like to for a KVK, because with infantry, you will get more kills for less speed ups and less resources, it just costs more time. That's pretty much the main trade-off when you are using infantry. So now that we've made it to the end of today's video, I just want to ask everybody one small favor that's going to benefit both you and me. And really simply, it is joining the Archer Syndicate Discord server. It is probably the best place to access instant reliable information on your account. It's a nice small community, around 300 members. Everybody's asking questions all the time. Someone's always willing to answer, whether it be me or another player in the server. And people are always having debates, nice friendly debates, about which commanders and pairings they think are in the best position. So if you want to go to a fairly non-toxic environment and a nice fun place to chat with me, chat with fellow subscribers, and ask any questions you want about Rise of Kingdoms, join through the link in the pinned comment and in the description. Trust me, you won't regret it. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.